afternoon, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great weekend. Today, I want to take it back to a very basic, fundamental thing that Jesus wants us to do. You know, we always say this, that he was a literal example on how we're supposed to live our lives. And I can't help, I want to say this, that, you know, trying to sleep last night, I, I woke up several times with this mindset, this thing on my mind of forgiving others. Forgiveness. It's an easy concept. I mean, it really is. It's an easy concept to think about, you know, to forgive somebody or to receive forgiveness. But it's increasingly difficult sometimes for us to forgive someone for a trespass. With, you know, when they did something wrong, they were, whether it was intentional or not. Because I know of, of, of times where somebody accidentally done something and this person walks around with a grudge for a long time because of that. And we're not going to talk about that today, but... We have to learn to forgive and forget. Though I'll be honest, I can forgive, but the forgetting part is sometimes very hard. I mean, that's just part of life. We're human. It's human nature for us. You know, it's you. we can forgive somebody, but sometimes forgetting is another thing. It's hard to forget. But I'm getting better at it and, you know, with God helping me get through it. But let us take a look at the definition of forgiveness real quick. And then we will see what Jesus had to say about it. Forgiveness is the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven. You know, there's two steps there, are two parts of that. It's the process of forgiving or being forgiven. Like I said, I think we all know the basics of this, but this is the official definition. The action of pro or process of forgiving or being forgiven. Two parts there. We as Christians know that we are all forgiven of our sins when Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary, right? We know that that was the great sacrifice to forgive us of our sins. You know, we've said it multiple times that it should have been us on the cross. Amen. It should have been us. But we know that, that that was him forgiving us of our, our sin. But I want to talk about day-to-day -day living. Day-to-day -day living, whether it's walking into the workplace and you're seeing this person that's always got this grudge, or maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend, whatever it may be, Jesus had something to say about this very much underused topic today. And I say underused because it's so hard to forgive sometimes, amen? And we I, we see people that's like walking around that are that are totally mad at somebody for something that happened six or seven years ago. And I can say I know of a, of a situation right now that's just going on where something happened several, several years ago and they're still holding on to that. We're not going to talk about that today. But I do know of a personal thing of like that right now. But let's explore this topic for a few moments and see what Jesus said about forgiving others. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Matthew 18, 20. And we're going to read verses 21 through 22. And this is a big thing here. The main point. So if you want to call it the key verse, call it the key verse, whatever. It says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. If you bow your heads, let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for this day that you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask you to let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today, God. Help us to learn how to forgive. Help us learn how to receive forgiveness, because there's times where we don't think we should be forgiven of things, God. But, God, I just ask you to let this, this message uh, open up the eyes of the believers, the ones that need to hear this message today, God, and help us to better understand forgiving and forgiveness as a whole. And we love you today, and we give you all the glory honor and praise to the praying church say amen. amen amen two simple verses right there was two verses we just read with a very big and profound statement statement here peter's like you know what i have how many times shall this person come to me or brother you know he says brother but it could be you know that's just brethren you know person people how many times could his brother how many times could his sister how many times are am i supposed to get you know put up with them trespassing against me they've messed up they've done this thing they've done me wrong how many times lord am i supposed to forgive this person 
How many times is Carson going to come up to me and do me wrong? How many times am I supposed to forgive him? Till seven times? That's what Peter says. As Jesus says, I don't tell you not seven times, but 77 times. He says seven times seven. Uh, ten. How many times? 70 times seven. Jesus responds, That's, you're, is it, you think he really t he's talking about 77 times? You think he's really just saying, well, you know, so if Carson comes up and he offends me that many times, one more time, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to forgive him of that. So what is Jesus actually saying here? He's not just saying, he's not saying that. It's also not enough to forgive just once. Jesus says in this parable that it's not enough simply to forgive someone seven times, but 70 times seven, which implies what? As often as needed. Let me say that again, as often as needed. Someone needs to hear that. Forgive as often as needed. Even though it's hard to come in and, and have to try to forgive somebody. You know, it's hard to do that sometimes, but we are to forgive as often as needed. And like I said, I know that's not as easy as it sounds. Because we're human, it's very hard to forgive. It's very hard, especially depending on, you know, what had happened. You know, I'm supposed to forgive Carson, of, and I'm just using him for example, because he's my son, I can pick on him. How, you know, depending on what Carson has done, how, many, how am I supposed to just forgive him? You know, how, you know it, it's not just that. You know, sometimes, you know, like, you know, people are bad about labeling sin and put placing a, a, a importance on how, 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 how uh, bad this sin is or how bad that one might be. But sometimes that's what we do for forgiveness, too. It's harder for us to forgive and let go and move on when it's something that we deem to be a little bit more severe. You know, am I, am, everybody understand what I'm saying? Sometimes it's hard. It just depends on what they've done. Because that's what I'm saying. I know it's not easy. You know, because it's depending on what happened to cause this anger or resentment in the first place. You know, and I tend to think about Jesus up on the cross. You know, as he's been, you know, he's been beaten, he's been slapped, he's been spit on. You know, he, he he's been humiliated. He's been bare naked to the world in front of everybody. But yet, what does Jesus say while he's up on that cross? What is what is the one thing that that stands out when he's when he's on that cross? He says, "For God, for Father, forgive them." for they know not what they do. So he's on the cross and he's asking for uh, God to forgive the ones that, are, that have caused this pain, the ones that have caused this suffering on Jesus. <clears throat> the very ones that have caused this pain to cause sc the scars to be in his hands and in his feet. He's asking God, forgive them for they know not what they do. You're talking about a man that was innocent. That was sentenced to death. But yet he's asking God forgive them. Jesus was the example of how we're supposed to live. And here he is on the cross forgiving the ones that have done the most extreme things to him. It doesn't get much worse than that in our physical life today. Where we have somebody that's causing this kind of pain and suffering. Forgiveness is a two-way street. Remember, we talked about the definition. We read the definition forgiven or being forgiven. There's two parts there. There are times when we have to forgive, and there's going to be times when we will need to be forgiven. Amen? Remember that. It's, there's two parts to that. We will have to forgive, and there's times where we will need to be forgiven. Forgiven or being forgiven. We will be in these situations at some point in this life that we live. That's just the way it is. And with that being said, Mark eleven twenty five, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Long story short, we have to forgive so we can be forgiven. We can't walk through this life with a grudge and hate in our heart. If we confess our sins, he is faithful 
and just to forgive us. We can read that in 1 John 1, 9. Let's read it now. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and, and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness is a key component to being a Christian or to live like Christ. Amen? I've said a thousand times, I know it isn't quite as easy as just forgiving and moving on. It's not just as that, it's not that simple. You know, because there is some pain with what's going on sometimes. There could be sometimes a scar that's left over. And it makes forgetting and moving on such a hard process at times. You know, when I said that, you know, Carson, the most severe thing he could have done, it could have left scars. It could have left pain. And it's hard to, you know, I could maybe say, okay, Carson, yes, I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget the pain that you inflicted on me. There's still scars that are trying to heal. Well, scars, are they're usually there forever, right? But there's pain there. And it's hard for me to just, you know, forgive and forget and just move on with life, you know, because it's always in my mind. It's always going to be there. But as I said, Jesus Christ on the cross, what did he do? He forgave the ones that were trying to, that, that well, not trying, they were inflicting pain and suffering on him. They were inflicting scars that would be left on him. But we still have to forgive and forget and move on just like Jesus did on the cross. You know, but I'm not Jesus. No, nobody said you were Jesus. I'm not Jesus. I'm, I even admitted at the very beginning of this sermon that it's hard sometimes for me to forget. I may forgive you. And I can talk to you like there's nothing else, like nothing else ever happened. But, you know, at the back of my mind, you because I'm human, I'm still going to remember some of this stuff, right? But if without Jesus, I couldn't forgive. So now in times of trouble, now in times of need, when, I, when I'm calling out to the Lord, I see a set of two scarred hands reaching down for me. Amen? Whew. I see a set of two scarred hands. Even though he was on the cross and he was being persecuted left and right, he still forgave. Amen? He still forgave. And I have, that's who I have to be. I have to be like Jesus today. I have to say that if you claim to, to be a Christian, if I claim to be a Christian, or in other words, a follower, of Jesus, a, a follower of Jesus Christ, I have to learn to forgive. I have to learn to move on. And that's more than just seven times, as Peter said. How can I possibly forgive these people? How? You know, it's easy for someone just to say forgive and forget. Look, I get it. And we need help from the Lord to be able to just to be able to get to, to, get to the forgiven part. Amen? He did me wrong. I understand that. That's why we got to have Jesus Christ to get us to that point to where we can at least start the forgiven process. Amen? It could be a, a family member. It could be a friend. It could be somebody from work that's been caused to do pain and suffering. It could be anybody. But we have to forgive and forget. But what if it was flipped? What if it's not just you having to forgive this person? What if it was you that wronged somebody at work? What if it was you that wronged your family member? What if it was you that... That, that wrongs your friend. And now you're the one that's in need of forgiveness. We have to forgive to be able to receive forgiveness. Amen? We have, this is two parts to that. We have to forgive to be forgiven. We want to be forgiven. We have to forgive. Amen? Because there's going to be times where you're going to find yourself in need of forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Two parts. We must be able to forgive so we can be forgiven. Amen? We, there's two parts to that. You have to remember that. And it's not a hard concept, but it can be a hard thing to put in action. Amen? It's easy for us to understand, okay, yeah, okay, that's good. I, I have to forgive to be forgiven. I get it. That's fine. But when it comes time to forgive that person, and then, like I said, sometimes there's there's times we've done something in our lives that we think, oh, I can't be forgiven of that. You know, 
You know, when I was youth pastor, I had teenagers. They would say, well, how, how could God love me? How could he forgive me of something that I did? I did this and blah, blah. I did that. Sometimes we don't accept forgiveness when it's there for us. But we must be able to forgive so we can be forgiven. And I got something I'm going to read to you. This is a story. And you try to fill in the, 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 the you try to put the pieces together which I will reveal this at the end. There was a man that worked, let me get this up so I can see it, and did the very best he could. He went to school to obtain new licenses and to further his work. He struggled with his first license, but finally got it and was so happy. There was one person in particular that didn't share the same sentiment, grumpy and mad, but life goes on. The man that worked hard to get his license kept going and moving up. A year later, this man was nominated for a big award, and that was Top Op. And guess what? He won. He was excited for his achievement of all his hard work, for his all, all his hard workers paying off. There was one person in particular that didn't share the same sentiment, grumpy and mad, but life goes on. Fast forward to two years later, and the man that worked hard went to take the next test, passed on his first attempt. He was so excited. He would be a class two operator and was a stack. There was one person in particular that didn't share the same sentiment. Grumpy and mad, but life goes on. Now, you may think, all oh, this sounds like a made-up story. And anybody that knows me personally knows right now this is not a made-up story. This man that was working hard trying to obtain all, all these licenses is none other than me. That was me. Now, this is a true story. And I guess if I was to name this story, I would call it grumpy and mad, but life goes on. I guess that's what I would name this story. But this is my story. I wrote this. This is about me. The other person that didn't share the same sentiment is somebody I have to deal with. Whenever I get an achievement, whenever there's something good that happens, this is always somebody standing in my way. It's always an obstacle before me. Never happy. Always angry. Never excited for somebody else's success. And I haven't really figured the one, this, the reason why. I, I mean, I have my suspicions, but I'll leave it at that. No names are needed here. No names. I'm not going to say who it is, who whatever it is, because there's some people that may watch this and may know who people I'm talking about. But do you know how hard it is for me to go in and have to put a smile on my face and deal with this person that's never happy to see anybody succeed in life? Do you know how hard it is for me to go in there after receiving the top up and won't look at you, won't talk to you for like a week and a half straight until you have to sit down and be a man and say, is this how it's going to be? Do you know how hard it is for me to forgive, forget, and move on? It's tough. That's why I say I forgive. That's why I can still go in there with a smile on my face. Good morning. How you doing? Good to see you. But yet I still remember the pain that you inflicted on me. I still have scars from it. But I still go on and because you know, I have forgiven him. He, he's not worth ruining my day. I want to go to work and try to make the best of it. I always want to try to have the very best the very best day I possibly can. I want to see everyone succeed in life. That's just the way I am. I don't want I'm not trying to compete with nobody. You know, there's several years ago when I finally when I passed my class three and there was another operator. You made a higher score than me. I don't care about all that. That doesn't matter to me. I'm glad I'm happy that you passed your test. I'm happy I finally passed mine. That's what it's about to me. That's what I want to see. I try to encourage people. I try to build people up, but I don't always get that in return. And I have to forgive people over that. The scars remain of the trouble he gave me. The scars remain of that major, and I mean major, attitude that I've been given. Yet I still continue to talk to him, and I still continue to forgive him. And I know there's going to be times where I'm going to need forgiveness. I'm going to need it. So I have to forgive. Is it easy? Absolutely not. 
It's not easy. I'm, I'm, I'm man enough to say it. It's not easy. If I didn't have Jesus with me, I couldn't do it. Do I have to do this? Do I have to be able to forgive and forget? Absolutely. Yes. Like I said, if I didn't have Jesus in me, there's no way I could do this. There's no way. If I didn't have Jesus living in me, I feel like I would probably revert to the old me. Amen? I would revert to the old me and take things and probably act out in the flesh. But that's not who I am anymore. You can ask Whitney. I used to have a horrible temper. And I still work on my temper, but I guarantee if you was to ask her right now, my temper is 100 times better than it used to be. Is it not? Would you agree with that? My temper's gotten better? I'm not perfect. But God's still working on me. So God's still working on me to help for help me to forgive people. Because I know I'm going to need forgiveness in times of my life. Because I'm not perfect. But it's God that keeps my head above water. And I know that. That it's God that keeps my head above water. Reaching down with his two scarred hands. I have one more verse I'd like to read before we get off here. And that's Colossians 3.13. For bearing one another... And forgiven one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. I must forgive the way Christ forgave me. You know, becoming a Christian in the first place, becoming a follower of Christ was forsaking the old ways. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up, that you're not going to, you know, do something to fall down. But that's why you have to ask God for forgiveness and pray for forgiveness. I have to move on, just as Jesus moved on at Calvary. I have to forgive and forget. And I know it's not going to be easy sometimes. But I know Jesus will help me through it. Amen? Just as he will help you through it. Somebody out there listening, they, they may have a situation going on right now. Could be a family member, could be a friend, could be a co-worker, it could be anything. But you're holding on and, it's, and you need to let go because it's just weighing you down, it's just slowing you down. We have to learn to forgive and forget. If you believe that, I ask you to say amen, that I believe that I have to learn to forgive and forget. If you believe that today, just say amen right now. Amen. amen. I must forgive so I can be forgiven. Even though it's tough, even though it's hard, we have to learn to forgive and forget and move on because I know I'm going to need forgiveness at some point in my life. Amen? Lord, we thank you for this day that you give us. God, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. God, I ask that anybody that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, if they are facing something or something's going on, and they're trying their best to move on. They're trying their best to forgive and forget and move on with their lives. God, I ask that you will give them the strength to be able to do so, God. That they can look the person in the eye. I forgive you. Or I, I need forgiveness. I ask that you forgive me today, God. I ask that you will give us the strength to be able to do what we know that has to be done today. And Lord, we love you today and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just name pray in the church said, Amen. 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 Like I said, forgive and forget. It's a hard thing. It's an easy concept, but it's hard to put into action because we're human. We're flesh. You know, that's why Jesus had to die on the cross for us. And he knows we're going to need help. It's like we were talking uh, before. We, we always like to talk about what we're going to be talking about, you know, for the message. And, you know, it's like uh, telling Whitney, you know, I'm sure God's like, oh, here we go again. Bro, how many times are you going to do that? You know, how many times are you just going to? But he loves us. And he's willing, he's just and able to, and, and willing to forgive us of our sins. Amen. Well, that being said, I hope you got something out of this message today. We love you. God bless you. We will see you on the next one. Take care.